Hey everybody! Happy Sunday! Happy Canada Day weekend! <laughs> feeble attempt at some Yngwie, but hey, um, happy Sunday, happy, does anyone, this is one of those weekends where does anyone know what day it is, because, you know, I think our Canada Day, for some people, starts on Thursday, for kids, I have a lot of students that were out of school pretty early, um, <laughs> uh, maybe last week even, you know, uh, but, uh, yeah, I couldn't keep track of that. It was like, hey, it's your last day of school. No, that's next week. No, oh, yeah, I'm done now. No. Plus different people in different grades and stuff like that. You know, if you're graduating high school or graduating grade eight or eighth grade, as you Americans say. Um, it's kind of weird how little things like that are different in different countries. I, I say grade eight and people are like, what do you just say? Eighth grade. Oh, now I know what you're talking about. I'm not really sure how that pans out. <laughs> it's like when I walk, ask for the washroom and someone says, you mean the bathroom? Yeah, 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 that's it. Okay. Canada, we don't care. We call it anything. So I think that has to do with multiculturalism. We just, there's so many different things, to, different ways to call things. We just figure it's just generic, right? Anyhow, it's Canada Day weekend. I don't think I could get any more red than how I look right now with my red Fernandez and everything else. And this color, this color is almost not showing up on this shirt, is it? Yeah, I, I, I should wear a black shirt. Sure, sure. Anyhow, Ingve Malmstein, love him or hate him, this is the world that we live in. Um, why do people hate these virtuosos? And I have a theory on that. Because you can't play it, and that's it. You know, I, you know, there's a little attitude that there was. I think it's still out there. People just kind of. You know, if you hear some guy shredding out a phenomenal player in a, in a music store, you know, these guys who practice to go to the music store, those guys. Um, some people will just come over. Like I, I come over to the guys. And if I hear a guy and I'm within earshot, I'm like, hey, man, fantastic playing. That's great. You sound phenomenal. There's other guys that would just kind of go, yeah, 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 you might be, uh, you might be on to something there. You might, yeah, yeah, you should work on this and that. Shut up, you know. I mean, the guy's good. Just let him, let him shred out. If he practiced three hours before he went to Long and McQuaid, <laughs> so be it. Or, or Guitar Center or Sweetwater or wherever, you know. You, you know, you practice before you go out. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I can't. I, I, I sound. I'm not great in the music store shredding thing, you know, because everyone's listening and stuff like that, but, you know, I just kind of play. You just revert back to your your blues pentatonic stuff. But anyways, Ingve Malmsteen, um, he came along in the 80s. Uh, I, I read about him first in, of course, Mike Varney's great um, new talent column in Guitar Player Magazine where I first heard of guys like uh, Vinnie Moore, Paul Gilbert, Paul Gilbert from Mr. Big, um, Yngwie, Mark, uh, Mark St. John, who was called Mark Norton or Mark Newman was his real name. Uh, yeah, Vinnie Moore was a big one. Um, yeah, and all these guys, what they did was they sent in, and this is back in the day where there's no internet and no uh, YouTube to upload videos. We have it so easy now, kind of and sort of, because... Because you know Rick, ba Rick Beato, watch Rick Beato's video. I'll post, I'll repost it. It says with WTF, what happened to the music scene, and he talks about in one section about how when we went to go buy an album, it was an effort. You know, when I was a kid, I didn't have a lot of albums, so I used to buy live albums. So I got basically a different take on the songs and got the compilation of all the best songs from that band because I didn't have money to buy the whole catalog. And now. Now you can just buy the cat. You can get the catalog for most bands on Spotify for ten dollars a month or whatever, and it's nothing. You know, you're probably not even paying. Parents are probably paying for that for kids, and you know, so they're not paying anything to get their catalog of musician. And then you go through it too quickly. You don't savor it. You know, I bought that first Ingve album and put it on and sat there and listen to it and listen to it and listen to it over and over again because that's all I had of that of Ingve was this album you know 
And I went out and I bought um, the live Alcatraz, live live uh, live sentence. It was called life sentence. You know, Alcatraz, the whole play on the prison thing or whatever. But you know, with, with Graham Bonnet singing. And there's some cool songs. There's an amazing version. If you like Since You've Been Gone uh, by Rainbow. Uh, Graham Bonnet was obviously the singer on that, and they do it on this Alcatraz live album. And Ingve just is this far out there better, or not better? We can't say it's better, but just a little bit more exciting than Blackmore was on Since You've Been Gone. You know, I just I thought it's just incredible stuff. You know. <laughs> Like I said, I don't practice for these things. Not like the music store. I don't practice for that. <laughs> but anyhow, um, Ingve Momstein. If you uh, are uh, love Ingve, read this book. If you hate Ingve and you're a guitar player, read this book. Why? Because you understand the man. You understand what he went through um, growing up in Stockholm, Sweden. Um, not much, you know. Uh, how do you say there's no like we like I said earlier there's no internet getting you the information he's got to go in there and you know and he would he unwrapped Deep Purple's Fireball and had the same experience that I just I just discussed about me listening to him is you just kind of took the you took the album and you just listened to it over and over again because that's all you had and then you started to learn parts you know and I wasn't good enough back then to learn English parts but I would find certain ideas certain certain scales he was using and I would I throw it into my own playing and brought my my own my own take on his you know shred mania um, a lot of guitar players don't like him it's one towards three it's really three scales he's doing put together and, uh, and it's, you know but man what a presentation you know he's got sure sure he's he's wearing all black like Blackmore did you know sure he's playing a strat like Blackmore did with a big headstock and you know and, and all this stuff but man what did he ever take it to another level you know so anyways all you Yngwie haters out there uh, you know I don't know I don't get it this is this is read the, read the book read the book read the book it's a phenomenal book uh, talks about his life talks about how um, you know if anything else in the music industry there's a killer shot of him right there um, if anything else it takes it's a big take on the music industry on how 80s bands get it, coming up were really taken advantage of by bad managers and not, not necessarily they're bad managers because they were good enough to make them all this money when they promoted their artist but they were taking all the money and just kind of letting those guys party and giving them money you know because they would rent Ingve Ingve rented a house with his band in LA and you know they ripped up the neighborhood and and there's a real funny story where you know this is this is after Alcatraz and and uh, someone put a note on the front door of their house and said Alcatraz you got to keep it down or whatever you know we we're calling the police and that <laughs> but then you know at one point in time they realized hey my manager owns a house some mansion up the street here and driving all these cars that he owns and he's renting us a house where we're trashing it and giving us enough money to party, but we really don't have any money. And we're making all this money and touring and doing all this stuff. And it's interesting how they prey on the young young musician who just wants the, the glory and the party money. And they take all his money. And it happened to him a couple of times, as it's read in this book, until his, you know he met his wife, his soon-to-be wife, uh, and she was really a really smart lady and she kind of said, hey man, you're making all this money and where is it? And then his manager got really scared and then eventually she became his manager and then now he is what he is right now today where he just kind of is found his groove as this instrumental guitarist and iconic guitarist um, who's just out there touring and playing and sometimes he does you know solo tours and he does whatever he does to to maintain his popularity and his income so god love him you know he did the band thing too he had a lot of great singers in his bands you know jeff scott soto um mark how mark how is that his name i can't remember no mark how's a hockey player no man i can't remember anyways i saw them Ingve a few times uh opening 
This is the one time I saw ACDC, Yngwie was opening at Maple Leaf Gardens, and um, I was just rabid just to see him. Um, amazing, amazing show, phenomenal. Barely any vocals. Saw him again, uh, I think, on Marching Out Tour, I can't remember, at um, my favorite venue of all time, Massey Hall. And a um, row of you know, marshals on either side of the drum riser, three half stacks that looked a lot like the guy over there. Well, he's one of these things, like my boogie. Um, three half stacks under the drum riser, and the, the, you know, was, the drum riser was Marshall height. So they fit right in there perfectly. Then he had two double stacks on either side of the stage as side washes. And, you know, you could hear him back before he went on. He's behind the amps warming up. He's playing like Hey Joe and stuff like that. It was kind of cool to hear that. And then, uh, and then, um, comes out and all you can hear, and Massey Hall is known for great sound. All you can hear is his guitar, which was just a friggin' storm. Uh, the singers, a little bit of the singer's voice, and the drums. And the keys, when there was keys solo, I guess the sound man turned it up. Forget about the bass guitar. It was Wally, Wally Voss, late, late, late great Wally Voss on bass. And, uh, and then the Joh Johansson brothers on drums and, drums and keyboards were phenomenal. Um, apparently they were the party animals too. Um, and then uh, I think it was uh, Jeff Scott Soto on, on the vocals that time. Because they used to flip singers in and out back then. Um, and then, yeah, eventually you had Joel and Turner and a few other singers and that was good music, man, in my opinion. Anyways, cheers to Ingve his, we his birthday weekend. Uh, he is phenomenal. I love him. Here's my kiss cup to cheers with you and cheers to you. Cheers, cheers to you, Canadians who are on our Canadian birthday. Cheers, Bridge on Fire and I, or Bridge on Fire, because I am included in that group of fine musicians. We will be playing at the It's Your Festival in Gage Park in Hamilton, if you guys are from Hamilton or in the area, 420, 420 um, Monday afternoon on Stage 4. Um, just when you, If you do come down and see us on Stage 4, I, it. I, I told the promoter, exactly what we were all about. We're an 80s arena rock cover band that covers Journey and, and uh, you know, Deep Purple and, and Van Halen and all, all these songs. And, and we do a lot of like, cool classic rock stuff like Kansas and, and stuff like that. Uh, we'll have a family-friendly set. We'll be playing some sticks and stuff like that in, in uh, on Monday. But um, we're on a new music stage, which might be a little interesting. I, I plan on just blowing down all barriers and we are who we are but i told the promoter what we were all about and they put us on the new music stage which is mostly for original acts we're not an original act so maybe we'll throw an original at you <laughs> Like I said, no practicing except for music, except for your music stores. Anyways, have a great Canada Day weekend, all you Canadians out there. Have a great Fourth of July week, because you're probably gonna take the whole week off, right, U.S.? No, you should after that debate. No, I, I don't get political on this show. Anyways, <laughs> take it easy, guys. Have a great holiday. Enjoy. Stay dry out there if you got rained on. I hear I heard you got rained on last night, Stan. Anyways, <laughs> at the same festival. Take it easy. Bye bye.